Hello, it's September 28th of the 365 Biblical Workout, and we're going to go ahead and pick up at Luke, Luke chapter 8. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And a certain woman, who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chuzza, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, and sprang up and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples asked, saying, asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear then the devil takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should be, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones of, on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and those, <clears throat> and those have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of life of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Therefore take heed how you hear, for whoever has, to him more will be given, and whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken from him. Then his mother and brothers came to him, and could not approach him because of the crowd. And it was told him by some, who said, your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered and said to them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and a windstorm came down on the lake. And they, were filling, and they were filling with water, and were in jeopardy. And they came to him, <clears throat> and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose, and rebuked the wind, and raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Gal Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time, and he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house but in the tombs. But he saw, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. 
and he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would not that he would permit them to enter them. And he permitted them. So the demons went out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it to the city and in the country. Then they went out to see at what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had depart from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also, who had seen it, told them by what means he who had been demon possessed was healed. And the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear, and he got into the boat and returned. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. So it was, when Jesus returned, that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at, the feet of, at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a certain woman, having a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, some, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she will be made well. And when he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her. But he said, Do not weep, she is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside, took her by the hand, and called, and called saying, Little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned, and she, rose, she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. Chapter 9 And he called his twelve disciples together, and gave them power and authority over all demons, and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither staves, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter, stay there, and from there depart. And whoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by him, and he was perplexed because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead, and by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets had risen again. Herod said, Herod said, John I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? So he sought to see him. 
And the apostles, when they had returned and told him all that they had done, then they took him and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city to a city called Bethsaida. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him, and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who ha who had need of healing. And when they, when the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions for we are in a deserted place here. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. And when they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are going to buy food for all those people, for all these people. For there were about five thousand men. And he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of fifty. And they did so, and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and twelve baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. And it happened, as he was alone, praying, that his disciples joined him and asked him and asked them, saying, Who do the crowds say that I am? So they answered and said, John the Baptist, but, other, but some say Elijah. And others say that one of the old prophets has risen again. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. And he strictly warned and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then he said to them all, if any one desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but for but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world, and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory, and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Now it came to pass, about the days, about eight days after these sayings, that he took Peter, John, and James, and went up on the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in the glory, who appeared in glory, and spoke of his decease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. That had happened as they were parting from him, that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was staying, while, while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. When the voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone, but when but they kept quiet and told no one in those days any of the things they had seen. Now it came to pass on the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, and that a great multitude met him. Suddenly a man from the multitude cried out, saying, Teacher, I implore you, look on my son, for he is my only child. And behold, a spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out, and it convulses him, so that he foams at the mouth, and, he, and it departs from him with great difficulty, bruising him. So I implored your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. And as he was still coming, the demon threw him down and convulsed him. Then Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and gave him back to his father. 
Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and end right there for now. And that's chapter 9, verse 42. So we'll pick up tomorrow at verse 43. Until then.